Good morning. Today I want to talk about love. Love. Now love, it's difficult to talk about love in some ways because there are so many distorted views of love in our world. The media presents love and our politically correct culture presents love as justifying any action um, if it's done out of love and that any kind of behaviour is acceptable as long as it's done with love. Now the Bible doesn't, doesn't support that view. But the love that um, the scriptures encourage us to have is love for God and love for each other and love for our neighbour. I was thinking about 1 John because there's a lot about love in 1 John. 1 John 3 says, See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. Now there are some people who say that every, every human being is a child of God. And that's not biblically correct, actually. Every human being is created in the image of God. But those who have been born again, those who have come to faith in Jesus, have been given the power, as, as John chapter 1 says, to become the children of God, born of his spirit. So when the Bible talks about the children of God, it's talking about those who are in God's family, by either by birth or by adoption, um, whichever, whichever passage you're reading, because Paul talks about, of course, the children of Israel being God's uh, vine, as it were, and us, those who are Gentiles, Gentiles, being grafted in, adopted into the kingdom. But whichever way it happens, those who believe in Jesus are the children of God. And this is this shows us what love the Father has given us. The manifestation of God's love for you and for me is the fact that you are in his family, that you, can, you have the right to pray, our Father, my Father, Daddy, because you have the Spirit of Christ in you, and so do I. And we are related, spiritually related, in Christ, part of each other, linked by spiritual birth. And this wonderful love of God, the more we think about this incredible love that God has expressed to us, how has he expressed it in the person of Jesus? The sacrifice that Jesus made. The, the incredible cost to him of coming to earth. The, it's just mind-blowing, really. Perhaps you've been a Christian like me for a very long time. And you're used to the gospel message and you're used to thinking about all the things that Jesus did. But when we focus and we stop and we think deeply about it, we realise just how incredible it is. that Je The things that Jesus did, how he laid aside all his abilities as God, limited himself to a physical body with all its awkwardness and embarrassing requirements. It's hard to reconcile God needing to eat and sleep and wash and go to the toilet. It's almost blasphemous, isn't it, to think. But when we think about the baby that came at Christmas, he needed a nappy change. <laughs> he, he submitted himself to such humiliation. Why? Because he loved us. And later on in chapter 4 of 1 John, he says, um, in this is, oh, there, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. We love because he first loved us. Perfect love casts out fear. If we have this love, that we realise the love that the Father has given us and how much he loves us, then if we are afraid of anything, it's, it, it somehow doesn't fit. 
Because if we really understand how much God loves us, why have we any need to be afraid of anything? Because we're safe and secure, not in something physical, but in the love of God. There is no fear in love, it says, 4.18. But perfect love casts out fear. You know, the mo I think it's almost the most common phrase in the whole Bible is, do not be afraid, or do not fear, or fear not. Because human, the human life is full of fear. Fear of the future, fear of the consequences of what we've done, fear of punishment. My generation, I, I suppose my generation, um, experienced in school punishment that is not allowed to be meted out anymore. And you were always afraid that, <coughs> that you would be punished for something that you did. And there is something in us, I don't know if it's in you, but in us, when someone who, who um, we look up to and who's important rings us or leaves us a message and says, please call. Our first th thought is, oh dear, what have I done? Are you like me? And that's the first thing that comes into my head. Because we fear punishment. We fear, we know how frail we are. We fear we must have done something or forgotten to do something or made a mess of something. And fear is to do with punishment. But you know, you and I, and all those in Christ, there is no fear of punishment. The punishment we deserve has been taken in the body of Jesus on the cross. We will not face punishment for anything that we've done. There's nothing that you've ever done that will incur punishment from God. Because if you've accepted Jesus as your saviour, and you recognize that he has paid the price, he's taken the wages of your sin in his own body on the tree. There is no fear of punishment. The punishment has already been meted out on Jesus. We're free. There is no fear in love. Realize today afresh how much you are loved. Have a great day. See you tomorrow. Bye.